that is so nice at the foot of the Red Mountain in Birmingham, Alabama. Bartow Arena, number one seed, Prairie View A&M, taking on Grambling State Tigers. The winner will go to the SWAC Tournament Final, the Cricket Wireless SWAC Basketball Tournament, brought to you by USAA. And we take a look at the Cricket Wireless bracket. And in one semifinal, it was overtime for Texas Southern as they de defeat the number two seed Jackson State. And it is now Prairie View's opportunity to try to punch their ticket for an all Houston final. And that will be Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. Hello, everybody. I'm James Red along with Tolly Carr. And Tolly, this is a situation where we've got two teams that really want to make it to the final, but one already has a trophy. They've got the championship belt in hand. Yeah, Prairie View, the defending champions, the last time we had a tournament, uh, they are a big-time favorite, but man, tell that to Grambling, who seemingly was on the ropes last night. They pull out an overtime thriller against their arch rivals of Southern University, so Grambling coming into this game riding high. And the Tigers are going to try to play Rocky tonight as we take a look at our Mountain Dew players to watch, and one player in particular, the hero of the game, Christian oh. of Grambling. And, and he was the GOAT for a while. He missed two big free throws there, but his teammate saved the day on an inbound steal, dishes it off to Christian, who hits it. He had 26. Those were two of his 26. Eight rebounds, four from nine from downtown. He's a shooter. And that was a career high in the quarterfinals for him. And on the other side, talking about Prairie View, Jawan Daniels from Harlem, NYC, 36 big ones in the quarterfinals. He was 7 of 12 from downtown. He was lighting it up. And we see the head coach for Grambling State, Dante Jackson, trying to get his team to the conference tournament finals. I had some friends from the SIEC calling me today saying they were cheering on Dante Jackson from his time there, a Central State alum. He coached there as well as Stillman. He's made a lot of friends and has some fans from along the way in his coaching journey. And Stillman College just up the road in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Randolph and Henry to tip. Controlled by Prairie View a and in. All right, Grambling here. A little zone activity. See them sliding. Back door. Cox with the lay in. Great assist by Cam Mack. <laughs> Mack finding the hole in that zone, and Prairie View quickly picking up three quarters. Court pressure. Moss has it, and Cox knocks it away. Moss gets it back, and it's Randolph goes right through his arm. Moss had a big start to the game last night against Southern. He picked up 12 quick points, showing he can get it done from behind the arc and above the rim. He's from Bessemer, Alabama. A lot of friends and family made the trip to see him play. Kelton Edwards to check that Dwayne Cox the inbounds for Prairie View and m Prairie View going with a three-guard lineup with Cox, Fate Williams, and Cam Mack. Make them a little bit more nimble offensively. Cox for three. Oh, in and out. Rebound by Christian for Grambling State. When you talk about their Prairie View offense, you cannot talk about it without discussing Daniels going for a career-high 36 points the last time out. Prince Moss trying to find someone. Michael Morton. Morton, he had a big overtime bucket last night as well. Running point for the Grambling Tigers. Mumford with the miss, and now Fate Williams taking over at point and gets it over to Cam. Back and forth they go on the perimeter, trying to find a way to pierce that Grambling defense. Gets it back over to Fate was Henry. Henry misses it, and now Prince Moss has the loose ball. A lot of arms and elbows in there fighting for that rebound. 
winner takes on Texas Southern in the conference tournament final on tomorrow. Boy, and if you missed that Texas Southern game, wow. An overtime thriller as they knocked off Jackson State. Randolph trying to go baseline against Henry. Moten right there. And there's a foul on the floor. For Michael Moten, the sophomore out of Shreveport, Louisiana, just right up the road on I-20. Moten with a nice stroke showing that he can shoot the ball. We saw a big three for him last night as well. And just dribbles in right inside the line. Nice arc on the ball. And ready to get back. And it's actually going to be Grambling ball here. Randolph trying to back his way in, gives it back to Moten, and this time he doesn't step in. It is a solid three. Moten has the stroke. Gramlin with the early three-point lead. Juwan Daniels couldn't find any room against Christian. Less than 10 seconds, Cam Mack has to do something. Ooh, a nice pass to Cox. Great job by Cam being patient to find Cox underneath the basket for two. Mack has done a good job of penetrating right inside of that zone and dishing it off to open teammates along the baseline. He does it again there. Prince Moss kicks it back over to Moten, who's had the hot hand. But Cox is right there to knock it away. And... Moten is saying, wait a minute, it went off Cox's foot. That, that was my initial read on the play. It looks like as he tried to as he tried to split through, it went off the leg of Cox. We'll go back to that previous play. Look at Matt directing traffic right there. No look. Johnny on the spot. All right, the officials say it still is Grambling basketball with 12 seconds on the shot clock. Randolph right there, but Henry with the block, and now Panthers on the move. Fake Williams trying to go coast to coast, and he is fouled by Christian. Yeah, Randolph upset about that play, thought he was fouled, but just a good recovery there by Henry for Prairie View. Comes from behind, gets it clean, and Prairie View on the run. And they'll be at the free throw. Just a one-point lead for Grambling, and now it's up to fate to either tie it, possibly give the Panthers the lead. And he successfully makes the first one to tie it up at five. Dickinson, Texas, for the junior guard. And that one goes off. Rebound Mumford. And now he gets it over to Moten. Moten's going to face a lot of pressure tonight, bringing the ball up court for Grambling. He's able to deal with it there. Moss got caught in the air, and Henry gets the errant pass. Now Prairie View trying to get the lead. You can see Moss signaling to himself that he should have shot that ball as he was getting back on defense. He came out aggressive in the first game. Seems a little... Apt to pass here early on. Moten already has all five points for Grambling. Christian always misses the front side, but there is a foul. I think they're going to get Daniels with the push in the back is fighting for the rebound there. And head coach Byron Smith has to keep them going because right now they're getting all they can handle from the black and gold of the G-men. We're all tied up at five right here on ESPN. We're made for. The 2021 SWAC Basketball Tournament on ESPN is presented by USAA, the official military appreciation partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. By Cricket Wireless, smile, you're on Cricket. And by Credit Versio, get your credit score up where it should be with Credit Versio. Visit creditversio.com. All even Steven at five apiece. Byron Smith trying to make it to his second 
tournament final. Some people would say it should have been third, but remember, due to COVID, the tournament was canceled. And in his eighth season at Prairie View, fifth as head coach, he has definitely changed the culture. And as he says, he recruits culture when he recruits his student athletes. Yeah, signed eight kids and didn't get to meet any of them face to face, which is pretty uh, outstanding when you look at his system about what he's looking for. The fact that he can identify and make the right choices, even if they don't sit down in the same room together before signing on the line. Juwan Daniels call for the foul on the inbounds. Cameron Christian. And yeah, there's some contact right there. So far, it's been a one-man show for Grambling. Tremichael Moten with all five points for the G-Men. And he stays the only person to score. Winner of this game, ready to move on to take on Texas Southern. It's going to be a busy SWAC weekend, man. I got to get in some SWAC basketball, football, Saturday and Sunday. It's going to be all SWAC for me on TV. No doubt about it. One point lead for the team in black and gold. And now Cam Mack getting a little pressure from Graham. Yeah, they're just waiting to see if somebody will pick up their dribble along the sideline where they can rush and trap. But... Prairie View taking their time here. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Cox has got to do something. Drives in. Acrobatic shot. It doesn't go. And Christian with the rebound. Cox, he has four of Prairie View's five points. Mack finding him on a couple of big passes. And Randolph a little out of control there. Fate Williams now with the ball gets past one of the defenders of Grambling. And now inside to Henry. And Henry puts it in for two. And Henry, he's all arms and shoulders. And he gets the ball down that low. He knows how to put it in the bucket. Panthers up by one. That one does not go for Grambling, and now Cam Mack has it, and he's on the move. Daniels kicks it over to Fate. Fate Williams is looking, but he says, no, I'm not going to try to go over Randolph. Not yet, but he does, and he makes it for three. You know, usually if you study long, you study wrong, but he studied long that time, and the outcome was favorable. It was Fate. <laughs> it was. Literally, I see what you did there. <laughs> Cameron Christian goes into the lane, and it just touches the rim, goes back to him, and goes out of bounds. Oh, boy, that's got to be frustrating. You miss a layup, get the rebound, and then you drop it out of bounds. So Christian is the leading scorer. Grambling really needs to get him going, and Moss as well. If they can get a one-two punch from them, you'll see a different result here on the scoreboard. Cox has a seat. Darrell Roberts, the Dallas junior, comes in for the Panthers. Four-point lead. And that one was up in the air for Darrell Roberts a little bit too much. And now Cunningham for Grambling State with the, with the ball gets it to Moten. And Moten is trying to power his way past Cam. Couldn't do it. And now it's over on the side back to Cunningham. Christian double teamed and he hits the rim. He'll shoot two. Yeah, he saw them closing in. Just jumped up, kind of leaned into the defender a little bit and that was enough for the official to make the call. See down here on the post. Quickly double team. <laughs> He's like, I got to do something. <laughs> Shooting sounds like a good idea. And now the Tigers only trail by three. Sometimes when your natural scorers and leaders on the team are struggling from the field a bit, a trip or two to the free throw line can kind of get things started for them offensively. Two-point lead now for the purple and gold. Daniels trying to find an opening. Darrell Roberts 
Hits the front side, but there's Henry right there. He gets the point, and he'll go to the line to get one more. And again, you see Henry using his agility and size on the glass. Pulls down the rebound, and he knows how to finish once he gets it. Looks like Randolph was called for that foul, and he's still looking like, oh, I didn't want to do that. Briscoe checking into the game for Prairie View. He was so excited he left his mask on. He had to run back over to the bench <laughs> to drop it off. Although in some places, uh, I know back in North Carolina in high school, players across the state had to play with masks all season. So we've kind of seen everything across the sports landscape this year. No doubt. And that definitely raised the level of difficulty for those high school athletes. Cunningham getting some pressure from Durrell Roberts from Prairie View. Less than 10 seconds on the shot clock. Moss misses everything but the backboard, and Randolph is right there with the putback, and he'll be fouled by, looks like, Roberts. Randolph is just one of those players that, you know, you give this description, and, and you mean it as a compliment. He's a junkyard dog. He's just down there. He's going to bang. And, Ooh, that was a lot of stuff. No, man, that's that's what Luca does every every night. That's man. Luca. His name is Luca. <laughs> His name is Moss on the court. Cam Mack gets the loose ball, and now Panthers trying to add to their lead. Yeah, some of the basketball purists just walked out of the room when they saw it. <laughs> Long three short. And Cam is going to try to keep it alive. He does. Darrell hustle. Roberts. And he is fouled. Great hustle by Cam Mack. He could have maybe just let that one go and chalked it up as a turnover. But made the dive out of bounds. And that's two, two great hustles there. That's often the difference between winning and losing. Putting it all on the line just to save the ball. Henry off the inbounds, and oh no, it went in and just tipped right back out, and now Cameron Christian secures a Cunningham, moving it across midcourt. Yeah, Henry very aggressive in the paint tonight for Prairie View. Moten had that ball on his hip <laughs> for a second there. It looked like he put it in his holster. <laughs> Cunningham goes into a lot of traffic. Moten, oh, almost had it, but he didn't. Now Cam Mack doesn't have numbers, but he's going to go anyway and in for two. Wow, with the Pepto-Bismol shoes on, and he gets it going. It must be the shoes, buddy. It must be the shoes. Yeah. Nice Euro step by Mack. That was textbook just, you, you didn't like Luca. Let's go Dwayne Wade. That, that was very Dwayne Wade-esque. With the sidestep to the basket. Timeout on the floor, 11.45 left to play, 14 to 8. And we've seen some great basketball. And Cam Mack, got to be the shoes, skip to Malou for two. Free delivery on your first order using the code order today. Welcome back to the Cricket Wireless Swag Men's Basketball Tournament. And let's take a look at the Cricket Wireless keys to the game. Smile, you're on Cricket. Yeah, for Grambling State, they have to figure out the view, not the view from the beautiful city of Birmingham. They have to figure out Prairie View, who they have not defeated since 2018. And also, offensively, they have to avoid scoring droughts, which can be a bit of a problem for them for Prairie View. Revive the Mac, and Cam Mac has been revived here early on. And wear down those Tigers. Prairie View had the day off. Grambling expended a lot of energy, a lot of emotion last night in the game against Southern. 14-8 is your score. And for Grambling, Kelton Edwards to shoot free throw. Kelton Edwards, senior from the Big D. Now, in North Carolina, you may say Dallas. Yes. But if you're from Dallas, you say Dallas. Really? Dallas. And those are the shoes. Cam Mack. I call those Pepto-Bismol Adidas. Someone else may call them Fuchsia. Well, he's been given grambling bits to their stomach with the way he's been playing. 
Only one free throw went down. Now Roberts taking control for Prairie View and m And he takes over. Nice stutter step to go back in for two. Hey, the flex afterwards, even better than the move. Now that was a flex from a guy that weighs 150 pounds soaking wet. Ooh, okay. <laughs> you got to flex harder than that, Yeah. Man. I don't think the gamma rays has hit him yet. <laughs> yeah, he might go beast mode. Give him a shot. Edwards, and he connects for three. Averages 6.2 points a game, and now he's halfway to his average. And he came right off the bench, ready to play. He was open, and he took his shot. Roberts for three. That one hit off the backside. And now Cunningham's going to try to run and gun. And Prince Moss for a dunk. Yeah, that, might get, that might get Moss started. A three-on-one break. He's been a little hesitant to shoot, but right there, filling the lane and throwing it down. Two-point game. Winner takes on Texas Southern in the tournament final right on ESPNU on Saturday. And a hand there by Travell Cunningham. Tigers can run and gun with the best of them. Yep, Tigers like to run. Here they go, 3-on-1 break. You've been mossed. Prince Moss with the jam. Besma Mossed. He's from <laughs> Besma. Eight ribs there, and then you, you, you've been schooling me on all the places to get good ribs. What do they now, eat down in Bessemer? Now, you got to remember now, Birmingham is a different story. You got a lot of different places where you can go. Too many to name. Well, I've been to the Magic City Classic a couple of times, and I saw a little bit of everything to eat. <laughs> Jawan Daniels with an NBA style three, and he leaves that hand hanging a little bit. Yeah, Daniels has been hanging out along the perimeter waiting for an opening, and you see why. He found one there, drilling the three, coming off that career high 36 on Wednesday night. Foul looks like it was on McGee. Sorry, and McGee, the big power forward. Yeah, his face said it all. He had the guilty look <laughs> after setting that screen. Now Cam Mack trying to direct traffic. Darrell goes around the world, touches the rim, and he'll go to the line. And you see constantly coaching Daniels at every dead ball opportunity going up to each teammate, dissecting what they just did on the offensive set, making sure everybody is where they're supposed to be. That may be the Harlem in it. <laughs> Leadership skills from up top. And Roberts connects on free throw number one. And Daniels will get a break. Cox is in. Yeah, Cox was off to a hot start at the beginning of the game. Mack fouled him a couple of times along the baseline. He scored the first four points of the game for Prairie View. Roberts connects on the second free throw. Seven-point lead for the Panthers. And they're going to press. Moten able to get it past midcourt, but Cox is going to stay on it. Yeah, to keep it that pressure. You can keep the ball in the middle of the court. Don't allow the sidelines to become an extra defender for the defense. Ben Nagiga with the steal. Panthers now can extend the lead. Oh, could have got it up to 10. Unable to do that cam off the backside, and now scrambling on the move. Cunningham. Oh, that one just hits the front and back part of the rim. Cam Mack coming nice back. Nice bounce pass. Yeah. He couldn't hold it. Ben, a big bow, Nagiga couldn't hold it. Cam Mack has really been showcasing his court vision. Not, not only seeing where you are, but seeing where you're going and putting the ball right there. 
And McGee will get a breather and Henry back in for Prairie View. Way to move it around the perimeter. Uh, but it doesn't go for Christian, but they keep it alive. Moulton now for three. He can't get it to go. All the long rebounds going Grambling's way. They're going to reset the offense here. Only down by seven. Christian did put a little back door. They didn't find them cutting through the lane. And Rose oh, point get it. blank range. Just had to drop it in there. Left it short. Henry kicks it back to the corner. And that's an air ball. Now Cunningham for Gramley. Tries to get it over to Moten. Inside to Christian, but he can't get it, but he is fouled. Boy, whether it's been long or short, the last few possessions by both teams. Can't seem to buy a bucket either way. It seems as though everybody's going to the shooting well and it's all dried up. Seven point lead for Prairie View and then Prince Moss and company trying to come back. Welcome back and Terry on Randolph was the hero his team was about nine seconds away from being kicked out of the tournament before he made a heroic move. I mean, Southern just throws the inbound right to Randolph. He finds Christian, who had just missed two big free throws. He was down in the dumps, but when he finds that ball and realizes, oh, wow, I can tie the game right there, that changed the complexion of everything. And I know that just crushed Southern fans everywhere. And that tandem of Randolph and Christian 12 and 26, 19 rebounds combined and five assists. Double G. Christian connects on the first, makes it a six point game. on the second. So you look on the floor right now for Grambling. See Moten and Christian. Those are probably your top two options for scoring here. Daniels back in the game for Prairie View. He has one three, but not on pace for another career high just yet tonight. Cobb in for Grambling. Oh, man. Left his feet. And Randolph goes to the ground. Looks like he's okay. Yeah, that's what it looks like when 6'8 and 6'9 collide in midair. Oh, yeah, he got him. He just left his feet right there. And Henry hits the first one. And Henry has shown a nice level of aggression early on. Not a guy that's going to create his shot. He's going to have to earn them. Earn his points with a lot of dirty work. And right now, five points early on in the game. Prairie View holding on to a six-point lead. Cox in for Daniels. And Henry connects on two. Yeah, really rotating players for Prairie View. Daniels has just got back in. Back on the bench again. Christian with the basketball. And now a pop... A Steal possibility by Cox. But good job by Cunningham to get the ball back and a foul called on Roberts. Yeah, both teams aggressive in the passing lanes. See what they're nearly a steal and come right back and, and it's a foul on Roberts. Roberts is saying he's using that forearm to push me off. Yeah, a lot of times it's the Reaction that gets caught. And for Roberts, foul number three. So 
Coach Smith will have to make a decision when or if he's going to sit him. Yeah, Daniels, who had just checked out, is going to come right back in here. And now he comes in for Roberts and Juan <laughs> Daniels, and yeah, he's like, ah. Oh. It's like choir stands, you know, when you see the seating for the bench. <laughs> Are you first chair, second chair, <laughs> third chair? Yeah, that's the way it's set up now with new protocols trying to create a little distance over there. Less than oh. 10 seconds, and Cam just that. gave it away. He gets it back. Got to shoot it quick. Cox coming in from the baseline, and now Cobb has it. They say shot clock violation, and I don't know. Cam just it just slipped it, out of his hand. He went to make a pass, and it slipped out and, and went the wrong direction. You see here, well, he had already made it. That's after he got the ball back there. Good block by Christian, and the ball never hit the rim, so shot clock violation going to the Tigers. Tigers now with an opportunity. Only four turnovers for GSU. G-Men trying to get an upset victory here in the semifinals against the three-time regular season champion. And a block there. Great job by Briscoe for Prairie View. And now Cam Max going to pull it back. <laughs> And slow things up. <laughs> Mac was in air and realized, oh, it's one of me and four of these guys. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's kick it back out here. <laughs> Grambling in a 2-3 here. Prairie View bringing it back over. Weak side corner, no good. Rebound Christian and Cunningham on the move. And Moten, that... Guard tandem trying to find a way through this Prairie View defense. Cunningham double team. Cobb going to get it right back over to Cunningham. And he hits the three. Happy days for Cunningham as he drills it. Hey. Man, people will never know how cool the Fonz was. <laughs> Especially when you see Henry Winkler today. You're like, that guy? Yes, that guy. About two or three generations ago. Fake Williams once again with the left hand. Four point lead for Prairie View, and this one is getting tight. A little weave action at the top of the key. Moten ends up with it. See Christian's over there in the corner, but. Mack closely guarding him. Randolph in the paint. Briscoe again with his second block since he substituted in. Third block by Verona Briscoe. Wow. Hey, guess what? He's tall. No doubt. I have him listed 6'8", but I don't know, man. You look at those arms. About 7'5". <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Henry from baseline, and that one goes right. Briscoe using that length to keep it alive. Faith Williams, he can't get it to go. Second chance for Faith. And it's got to be Faith when it's Faith Williams. He gets another one. Man, you look at Briscoe. He was kind of responsible for keeping that possession alive with the back tap. Lead back up to six. Moten, now he is fouled. Yeah, but they got him that time. He reached in and swatted down. He's going to pick up the foul. And Briscoe's not happy with himself on that play. But, I mean, three blocks. You can't ask for anything more in a substitute role. Edwards right there with three. Six-point lead right here on ESPN. Tonight on ESPN and ABC. And being the number one seed, Prairie View a and is no guarantee that you're going to win. But when you have an all-conference player like Jawan Daniels in his quarterfinal game, he had a career evening, 36.6 rebounds. And look at that number from three-point land. Yeah, seven for 12. He has one tonight, but you see where he's been hanging out on their offensive sets. He's hanging out around the perimeter. And he can find an opening. He's going to let it fly. 
because he knows how to get it in. For Michael Moulton to shoot two, and he connects with one. Yeah, Moulton with a nice shot. Didn't shoot a lot against the win against Southern, but when he did, he made it count. And the second one doesn't go. Daniels touched it, but Henry was able to secure the rebound. A little bit over three minutes left to play in the first half. Just as we thought, a grudge match between two very athletic teams. Daniels now being covered by Christian. They're just moving it around, trying to find an opening, and Fate gets it to Henry. And Daniels all the way on the other side. Moten secures the loose ball off the missed shot. And you see, he does not need a lot of space, just a little bit of an opening, and he catches it. He's going to let it go. Randolph trying to get it to oh, Christian. He does. Fake. Great job. The tandem of Randolph and Christian working again for Gramlin. Threw Henry off with the little fake. Kept those long arms out of the passing lanes and found Christian right under the basket. He has seven points, and now it's a three-point deficit for Gramlin. Prairie View needs to extend before the half. Less than 10, Daniel's gonna shoot. Oh, that one looks like it could have been tipped. Pushing it, Christian right there, and a nice lay-in for Cameron Christian. I thought about ducking it, but decided better. Just rolled it over the top of the rim. One point game, Prairie View A&M, three-time regular season champ. They're the last one to win the tournament title in 2019. But right now, they're feeling the pressure from the G-men. Daniels in the paint. And that's how you release some of that pressure with Juwan Daniels for two. Yeah, Daniels had just been floating around the three-point line, maybe rushed the last two. And that when he decided to drive to the bucket, get a little closer, and he got it to fall. And look, he's 6'7". He's got the size to finish around the rim. Cunningham. Christian all by himself, and he connects with three. Oh. And now we're all tied up at 29. It's that song, All By Myself. Oh, now see, that wasn't in your contract. <laughs> Once. They said I could sing one song. Okay, there, there well, you is. got it in, check. <laughs> Move on. It's the last <laughs> night. It was, it was use it or lose it. Fate high off the glass, doesn't touch anything, but there's a foul. I don't even remember who sang that song. I think a number of people have sung it since it first came out. But you do know one person who should never sing it again. I'm not saying that. <laughs> Somewhat, as Patti LaBelle would say, somebody loves you, baby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and Henry was fouled, and he'll go to the line and shoot. This game is really tightened up here. Just a little over a minute to go, and we're right back where we started now that Prairie View squeezing it up to one. Henry's had a really good first half. He's been really aggressive. A couple of trips to the free throw line. He's finished around the basket a couple of times. He's already got seven, working on eight points here. And he does have eight now. Two-point lead for the team in purple and gold. Timeout called by Dante Jackson and the Tigers. He wants to draw something up with just a little bit over a minute to play. You know, one guy we haven't seen a lot of, uh, he had one dunk in there, but uh, Prince Moss hasn't been back in the game in a while. He's really a guy who can score very quickly, very athletic, good shooter. Uh, Christians, he was wide open on that three-pointer there, but he's still trying to get into the flow of the offense here as well. But when you're a coach, you know how much your player has in the tank. So he may be holding that turbo booster until he really, really needs it. Yeah, and Moss, I think consistency is the thing you want to see from him. Uh, last night, he had 12 points. I think they were all in the first half. Didn't do a lot in the second half. Actually fouled out in that game in the second half. 
Uh, we mentioned how, how sad he was on the bench. There was a possibility his career was over, and then Grambling resurrects their season with the win over Southern. Teammates helped him. Yes. Keep it alive. Hey, teammates. Teamwork makes the dream work. There you go. Except when you're singing. <laughs> you could have backed me up, man. Uh, no. I would not <laughs> sign that contract. <laughs> Double team. Edwards and wow, Kelton Edwards did not score in the quarterfinals, but right now he's keeping this game all tied up at 31 with less than 40 to play. Yeah, Edwards came into this game ready to play. He has six points off the bench. Having a little discussion about rotations there on that zone. Henry versus Randolph. And that one doesn't go. Rebound Grambling and Cunningham's on the move and they're gonna to try to hold it for one more. Grambling can actually take the lead here after trailing in this first half. They'll hold it for the last shot. Moten uses it and he doesn't get it to connect. Cox running out of time. Gonna shoot a long three and Cox with the right hand, that's red hot. The Panthers get one at the buzzer, and now they have a three-point lead and one half away, and Byron Smith is like, wow. I didn't know that guy could do that. Yeah, we thought maybe that Grambling would hold it for the last shot, but Moten drove to the hole early, left some time on the clock for Prairie View, and they were able to take advantage and take the lead going into the break. We have seen a very entertaining first half Second half should be just as good. Winner moves on to the conference final. And with only about a thousand fans allowed to be in Bartow Arena here in Birmingham, I think this fan is social distancing, but he's sweating a little bit because his Panthers are, tra are up only by three. I was going to say, he's a little nervous. He's sweating it out at halftime. We have a whole other half to go here. This team's up by three. He should feel a little more confident, Jay. Well, he's feeling the pressure, and part of that pressure comes from a young man from Grambling, number 12, Cameron Christian who has continued his dominance that he had against Southern University last night. Yeah, a slow start here, but he came on strong later in the half. He's going three of seven from the floor. He's got 12 points, and Christian can do it inside and outside. You see, man, just open is all outdoors right there. Five of six at the free throw line. He's getting heated up. And he's the only person that is in double figures, Tali. And when you think about this, outside of that last three-pointer by Cox, this is basically an even-steven game. Yeah, and for Prairie View, you know, we thought Daniels would have maybe another monster game, potentially coming off 36 points. But you look at the stat line, it's been Dwayne Cox and Henry who's been getting it done. So Prairie View is not a team that, you know, they have all these guys that can create off the ball but they have a lot of people they can depend on to do the work underneath the basket, making backdoor cuts. And when you have a point guard uh, like Cam Mack, he can find them in the right spot. Well, when you look at Grambling, some of their bench players have stepped up big. Kelton Edwards, a huge lift for the team. Do you think they need to go deeper into their bench or try to rely more on those frontline guys to push this over the top? Well, you know, we talked about it going into the break, and you talked about you know, I wanted to see Moss. Maybe could we see a little more from him? And, you know, you said the coach, well, he knows who has what in the tank and when to hit the turbo button. So I still think there's some uh, scoring and some points and some value that Grambling can get out of their starting five. Well, the Tigers only trail by three. Panther power is in full effect, but it's being pressured by the black and gold of the G-Men. Three points separate these two teams. Winner takes on Texas Southern in the conference final on Saturday. You're watching the Cricket Wireless Swag Men's Basketball Tournament presented by USAA. We'll have more right here on ESPN. Halftime continues with Prairie View A&M with a three-point lead here at the Cricket Wireless SWAC Men's Basketball Tournament presented by USAA. And this tournament, 10 teams are involved in the SWAC Conference, but only eight 
can make it to the tournament and the top four seeds so far have advanced to the semifinals. Texas Southern with an overtime thriller and they oust the number two seed in the semi. Yeah, the three against the two. Man, you talk about Michael Weathers. He comes down and drills a three, drills another. That was something to behold in case you missed it. And when you look at Jackson State, they never trailed at a 12-point lead, but Texas Southern doubles up, and they defeat, double up on Alcorn in the second half, and that's Jackson State women who have made it to the championship round, and they will face Alabama State, number one seed versus number two seed, and they split during the regular season. And it's safe to say they may not be a love fest there. <laughs> and take a look at the... Bracket presented by Cricket Wireless and Prairie View and m Gramlin playing now. They will take on Texas Southern, who are getting some much-needed rest. That game will be 6 p.m. Eastern right on ESPNU on Saturday. And in the women's bracket, it is all set and ready to go. It is number one seed Jackson State taking on the number two seed Alabama State. That'll be live right here on ESPN3 starting at 2.30 Eastern. And you can catch the replay while you're eating your breakfast on ESPNU Sunday morning at 10 a.m. I don't eat cereal for breakfast there, Tali. You do not eat cereal for no, breakfast? No, come on, man. No. Oh, my no. God. No, that's for the babies. It's for all of us. No, baby, <laughs> cereal. I'll take Cinnamon Toast Crunch right no, now. I'm an old school grit guy. We'll be right back on ESPN. The 2021 SWAC Basketball Tournament on ESPN is presented by Mountain Dew, the official basketball sponsor of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And by Home Depot. Home Depot Retool Your School is powered by purpose. Vote today at retoolyourschool.com and help upgrade your HBCU. And Grambling women gave a good effort against Jackson State but they will be going home or probably staying the route. Grambling, let's take a look at the highlights from the first half, which was very competitive for the G-Men and Panther Power of Preview and m Yeah, you see Moten there in the corner. He got off to a hot start. And then Moss, he got that jam. Cox on the other end for Prairie View. Strong defense there. Even more defense. Get that out of here. In the corner is Christian. He was wide open. Daniels had a career high 36 the other night. It's Fate, right? From the corner. Fate Williams. Step back. Yes. And Christian finishing here just over the rim. Daniels not getting all the three pointers to go, but 6 7 in the lane. That'll work. And then right before the half, the pull up. And it's good for Cox. And that brings us to our 34 31 scores. We get ready to start the second half here, James. Let's take a look at the Cricket Wireless halftime stats. Smile, you're on Cricket, and it's just about even all the way down, except for points in the paint in favor of the Panthers. And we're ready to tip off. And your favorite player from Bessemer, Alabama, Prince Moss, is ready to inbound. Yeah, his, his people are here. They're clapping for him. They love that dunk. They'd like to see a little more. Randolph will get it back over to Cunningham. Christian, and he slips, and Cox will get the loose ball over to Fake Williams. It must be Fake because Williams hits it in. Using the rim as a defender against the defense coming up on the other side. He gets that one to go. Five point lead for the Panthers. Randolph, and yes, nice put back there. Cuts it down to three. Yep, Randolph just made some space down there after he got the ball and easy layup. No easy baskets here during the regular season. It was 59-50 in favor of Prairie View A&M. Daniels for three. 
And he's looking all the way back on Harlem. Did you see it, Harlem? The Harlem, New York native. He either has some friends or some critics in the stands. I'm not, for, I'm not for sure which one, but he let them know that whatever they said, he heard, good or bad. Foul as Travell Cunningham tries to get to the rim, and it looks like that was on Fate Williams. And that's the thing about the release for Daniels. It is a quick release, and he just hangs out outside the three-point line, and if he just has a little itty-bitty piece of space. He's going to pull the trigger. Misses the front end. Cunningham, the senior out of Chicago. He has five and five on the evening. Five points, five boards. And he misses both. Ooh. Henry with the rebound. Cam, it must be the shoes. Mac bringing the ball up. Fate kicks it out. Cam misses that one, but Daniels is right there to chase it down. Another possession for Prairie View. Yeah, a good back tap by Henry to keep the possession alive. And that one doesn't go for Cox. And now, Gramlin on the move. Christian strong to the hole there. Determined along the baseline, and he gets it to fall. Four-point lead for the Panthers. Cam going to slow it down. They just wanted the ball screen from Henry. Less than 10 on the shot clock. Cam fade for three, and that one hits the front side. Christian with the rebound, and Gramlin's on the run. Moten pulls back because he sees Cam right there in his face. Shoots over Henry, hits the front end, but Moss flies in and gets the rebound and another possession for the black and gold. And Moss showing you his athletic ability there, skying above everyone else to get the rebound. Resets for Gramlin. Cunningham being double teamed. He gets it out to Moss. Moss over to Moten. Cross back over to Cunningham at the buzzer. Hits the rim and doesn't go. Henry secures it. And now Prairie View A&M back on offense. Cox trying to find a way to get it over to somebody in the paint. Rambling in the 2-3. Christian keeping a close eye on Daniels. Cox going baseline. He misses it, but Henry scoops it up. Tries to go back up and hit the bottom of the backboard when he went up. Loses it, and Grambling gets the ball back. And Sarion McGee comes in for Christian, who and for Randolph will get a rest. And Briscoe coming in for Daniels for Prairie View and m Briscoe already with three blocks. Yeah, he's a disruptor on defense. Bramlin now taking the slow, steady approach, trying to get a basket. McGee. And this time, Briscoe <laughs> once again says, hey, I did it three in the first half, but there's a foul. I think that's goaltending. And they say it is a goaltend, and Briscoe's like, oh, come on. Let's see. Let's see here. He's going to be the help defense. He rotates over. Shots up. Ooh. It wasn't on the way down. I couldn't tell from that angle. It could have potentially hit the glass first. Now, once the ball hits the glass, you can't touch it. But uh, from that particular angle, it looked like a pretty decent block. Byron Smith is trying to plead his case. That point does count, and now it's a two-point game. Daniels. He thought about it. Mm -hmm. Fake Williams now inside the key, and he connects for a long two. Yep, pulled up right at that right elbow for the shot. Prairie View up by four now. 
Double screen for Cunningham, All but it's right, a turnover. Away. Good job by Faith Williams and Daniels. Gets it over to Henry with a nice lay in. Transition basketball at its best for Prairie View. Daniels leading the way, and Prairie View converting on that three on two fast break. Lead now starting the hemorrhage for Prairie View a &M. And had some pushing and shoving, and it looks like, and Dante Jackson's like, who is that on? It could be on Christian. Timeout is called, and with 15-15 left to play, Dante's like, what happened? And they're going to try to explain it to him, but the lead expands for Prairie View a and and Christian's trying to plead his case. We'll see what happens coming up next right here on ESPN. Made up, we're made for. And the team huddle there for the G-Men of Grambling State as they trail the Panthers of Prairie View A&M 43 to 37. Winner moves on to take on Texas Southern. It's the three seed in the tournament conference final on ESPNU. You know, James, we've been able to pull off a successful tournament so far. There's a lot of COVID protocols in place, and hopefully this time next year we'll have the usual bells and whistles. You know, I'm missing the bands, the cheerleaders, the, the contests during the timeouts. Who can hit a half-court shot for $1,000? All the things that makes tournament time so special, but just so happy that we can be here and get all the action because last year at this time, man, we found out at the last minute that there was not going to be a tournament at all. Last minute is an understatement. I was sitting down in this building doing interviews, and then it was an all-stop. Cancel. Wow. Darrell Roberts with the putback attempt doesn't go. Henry powers his way back in. And now that's a flex that you want to see. Linnell Henry for two. Man, Henry says, this is how I earn my scholarship right here. I fight for rebounds, loose balls, I block shots. And if I get it in the paint, I can put it back up. Darrell Roberts looks like he got hit in the jaw. And, you know, that was a scrum. You don't know who did it. Randolph is going to go out for Grambling State. In is McGee for the Tigers. Yeah, Roberts has had a tough time. He picked up those three quick fouls in the first half, finally getting some action back. Oh, steal from Daniels. He and should take off here. Oh, oh and he missed the dunk. Oh, and he's not looking back at Harlem on that one. No, he's not looking back at the bench either. Oh, no. Smith says... Think, use your head. He was ready, cleared for takeoff. Oh, yeah, the rim was not kind to him on that one. Oh. It happens. McGee, big man with the spin move, a little out of control there. Cox gonna push it to Fate, and Fate is in. Fate Williams for another two. 10-point lead now, timeout by Dante, and he's not happy, and his staff is not happy, but they know they've got to calm his team down as they trail by 10 points. They don't want it to get completely out of hand, and he's saying, come on, fellas, we got to play better. We'll see if they can right here on ESPN. And we're taking a look at the SWAC Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Cricket Wireless Bracket. And number one taking on number two. That will be live on ESPN3 at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. And you can watch the re-air while you're eating your morning toast on ESPNU Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And I know, Tyler, you'll be eating Captain Crunch. I'm uh, not too big on Captain Crunch. <laughs> yeah. Fruit Loops, yeah. Fruit Loops? Uh -huh. they, they make them with marshmallows now. Really oh, good. well, that's not Fruit Loops. <laughs> that's something else. <laughs> yeah, you would be, I think, pocket flavor. Man, I have kids all really? over my house, man. I just go with the flow. Now going with the flow with a 10-point lead. Fate Williams inside, trying to do a scoop oh. and score inside and out. McGee with the rebound. Boy, he didn't have his lucky charms there almost, though, to get that. That one by Edwards doesn't go, and Cox skies in to get the rebound. Cox has had a great all-around game, getting it done on offense, on the boards.
Three guards set. Fate Williams, Cox, Cam Mack. Less than 10 seconds. Cox goes into the lane and he finishes. 12 point lead now for the Panthers. This one's slowly starting to creep away from grabbing. Still lots of time left, but they're going to have to put some points on the board here. McGee, and this time he's stripped away by Fate Williams. Cox has it, and he's fouled, looks like, by Christian. But let's see what they will call. Yes, that's they say Christian. Christian. That's going to be four. We're going to have some substitutions. Darrell Roberts in for Cox, and now Christian is going to have to sit down. Randolph in for McGee and Prince Moss in and also leaving Zahad Mumford. They all take a seat. Christian, the most important guy right now because he's nursing four fouls. Yep, he's your leading scorer. Just the shade under 13 minutes to go here. You're trailing by 12. Leading scorer on the bench with four fouls. Someone is going to have to step up offensively for Grambling here to jumpstart the offense. Baseline. But Darrell Roberts doesn't go. Moten is double team, gets it out to Randolph, pass mid court. Double team is in full effect defensively for Prairie View. Edwards gets it back out to Moten, and oh, almost goes past mid court. And this time he's going to throw it straight to Cam Mack. He was worried about getting a backcourt violation, and Cam says, Thank you very much. Yeah, he got to telegraph that one. He just either. If this was football, I'd the receiver the whole way. He had Randolph down on the baseline, but they saw exactly where the ball was going because his eyes told the story. Henry strong on the inside, doesn't go, but the put pass does over Randolph. Yeah, that battle between Henry and Randolph. Henry getting the better of him right now. He's a couple of rebounds away from a double-double. Grambling Edwards has shown he doesn't mind shooting coming off the bench. Nice inside move from Travell Cunningham. The Chicago native gets two on the board and stops the bleeding from Grambling. Still down 12 points. Not only do you have to get some buckets here, but you also have to get some stops. Fate off the backside of the rim. Cunningham going to bring it back, but Darrell Roberts is right there at midcourt trying to get it free. Almost a steal. Prince Moss hits the front end, and Fate Williams gets the rebound. Yeah, Moten had a chance to shoot that shot. He's a pretty good shooter. Instead, trying to get Moss going, but Moss left it short out of the corner pocket. Timeout. Looks like Prairie View has a timeout. And he's trying to make sure that his team maintains their efficiency on offense, but also their intensity on defense. Yeah, so Cameron Christian getting that fourth foul definitely hurts. Who it's going to be to step up for the G-Men. Lead is expanding for Prairie View. They're about 10 minutes away from the conference final right here on ESPN. Sign up at ESPN.com slash bracket and start your group today. The power of technology. About 20 years ago, you would need a crate of records. Now it's just a laptop and a machine. Man, you would need several crates of records, and if somebody bumped the DJ table, the record would skip. <laughs> and he puts the music on pause. Man, just do it all from your laptop now. There you go. Roberts shooting a long one and it is a three. And it is offensive euphoria for Prairie View. Yep, everything favoring Prairie View right now. And the Panthers for Grambling. Moss exploding to the rim. He could do a lot more of that. And they need him to do that. 13-point lead. You see his athletic ability, long, lean frame, but quick on the dribble, quick leaper. Defense, 
Prairie View is going to take some time, even though it's 10 minutes left to play here in the game. But they're going to take their time. Roberts from way out. I think that the, is the definition of a heat check. Oh, definitely a heat check on that one. I think if he takes one more from that distance, the temperature will be rising for Coach Smith. Moss, two in a row for Moss. Remember what we talked about. You know when you can push that turbo button, and he was saving him for right now. Yeah, I mean, he plays in spurts, but when he decides he's ready to shoot and score, he can do it with the best of anyone on the court right now. Defending Fate Williams and now Henry way out there on the perimeter. Terrell now going up against Taylor who just entered the game. And Terrell teaches a lesson to Peyton Taylor, the Cleveland, Mississippi native, just entering the game. But Terrell was like, I'm already hot. Take some of this heat, young man. Yeah, Robert says, all right, maybe I'm not going to take another 30-footer, but I'm going to give you a quick spin along the baseline, absorb your contact and bang it in. He can get three the old-fashioned way with this free throw. Roberts had those three fouls that pulled him off the court. He came back in, took a blow to the mouth, had to go back out, but now that he's seeing some extended minutes, making it worth his while. Getting it to Moss, who's already hit back-to-back -back shots. Can he go with a long three? And he is fouled, so he'll have three free throws. And Cox is like, I don't believe it. <laughs> and now Byron Smith is going to advocate for him. All right, let's take a look. Ooh. At first glance, I don't think he touched it, but the camera was following the ball. He didn't see it all the way through if he touched that elbow or not. First one is good for Moss. All right, let's look at a different angle here. Moss pulls up. Mm. Ah, I'm going to say no. I'm, I'm going to have to refute that and <laughs> say it was a pinky finger. Pinky finger. Pinky finger. We, we might have to let Judge Judy decide this uh, one. Yes, we'll go there. Pinky finger. Maybe Judge Maybelline. That, that might be my choice. Oh, uh, okay. Wapner doesn't do it anymore. He's, he's, he's long gone. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> you you keep telling me you're a young man, but you keep bringing up all these this things I, I, that I, only. I'm not young or old. <laughs> I'm, I am timeless. Okay. <laughs> all right, doc, Dr. Manhattan. I hear you. <laughs> Faye Williams in. Cox is out. And Linnell Henry is in for Briscoe. All right, Briscoe, what type of spark did he give on defense? He's just a blocking machine for Prairie View. Daniels able to get that inbound, and now Fake Williams going to push the issue and kick it back out. And Cam is going to slow it down just a little bit. Kind of a quiet night for Daniels, just eight points coming off a career high 36, and that really speaks to the versatility of Prairie View. They don't depend on any one single scorer. They have a lot of guys that can just do their job and get it done like that guy right there, Roberts. Roberts like a Dallas tornado spinning, spinning, spinning and going through downtown. Cuttingham. And that one doesn't go, but the putback is good. Mudford with the putback. So Grambling just kind of hanging around that 12-point deficit. If they can get it down to single digits, that can change the emotional complexity of this game. Kind of feel like you're a little closer to pulling back even. Fate spin move goes through Henry's hands, and now Prince Ma is able to secure the loose ball. Cunningham is going to try to push the issue. Gets in the paint. Long three. I Doesn't been, go for Mumford. I wouldn't have been mad at Moss if he would have shot that. He's had a hot hand of late. He was had enough of an opening, but he decided to pass it. 
Time is not working for Grambling, but Prairie View is saying we're going to take this clock and hold on to it as long as we can. Fake once again, Fake Williams. Well, a hesitation dribble. He pulled it up as if he was going to pull it back out and quickly changing direction and exploding to the hoop. Fate Williams came off the bench their last game out. Now started this one and impressive night with 14 points. Moss trying to create. Oh, this time he looks like he was going to fall. Spin move. Well, cutting oh, in. The only problem is he spun without the ball. As they say, a lot going on there, but in the end, Prince Moss fouls Roberts. See Byron Smith, the coach is never happy, even when they're winning. Cox, and then you see Prince Moss with a nice finger roll, but still Grambling trails Prairie View right here on ESPN. 2021 SWAC Basketball Tournament on ESPN is presented by USAA, the official military appreciation partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. By Cricket Wireless, smile, you're on Cricket. And by Credit Versio, get your credit score up where it should be with Credit Versio. Visit creditversio.com. And Byron Smith about six minutes away from meeting Johnny Jones and Texas Southern for one more time in 21 to see who is the best out of the state of Texas here in the SWAC. Wow, it could all it could be all about H-Town in the men's championship on Saturday. Now, some Prairie View natives will say, we are not in Houston. Can we say Houston Prairie. Metro? Can we say oh, Metro yes. area? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Now Prairie View is a suburb okay. of Houston because of those Nice interstates they have there in the state of Texas. Roberts does not get it to go and rebound now for Grambling. If you're a G-Man fan, now it's time to root for your team because it's go time with six minutes left to play in this game. Well, they pulled out a miracle last night. Do they have another one in the bag tonight here against Prairie View? Randolph, and they say count it. Miracles do happen, and it may be starting with Randolph, too, and a possible one more. Hey, he was a big part of pulling it out last night. Here you see he just says, I can do that little Euro step thing you little guards have been doing. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that little side step. Terry on Randolph, Dallas native, went to Temple College before arriving in Grambling, Louisiana, entering the game now. Cunningham for the G-Men. Cunningham's got to slide back. Roberts tried to quietly walk down to the other end to free himself up. Cam Mack back in. Ferris, Paris back out for Prairie View. So Grambling, you're down under six minutes. You got Christian on the bench with four fouls. At what point do you start thinking about maybe getting him back in the game? Got to score a couple of more points. Loose ball, great job. Able to hold on to it. Oh, that one goes awry. Great job by Henry to bat it away. Roberts, oh, huge leap oh. and another leap. And yeah, we got a man yeah. down. That Wow. That was Zahad Mumford who went flying in the air. That was Along with Cunningham. Two Grambling players like literally jumped over the head of Roberts here trying to block his shot. Cunningham trying to do all he can on his back. That's deflected. You see Roberts there. There's one. There's two. Woo! Oh, that, that was. One leg got over, but the other one didn't. Luckily, everyone's okay. That looked scary for the first second. And that one goes in for Roberts. And as you said, we need to see a Cam Christian, and he comes in for Zahad Mumford. Well, I mean. You know, a couple of things can happen. You can just let him sit over there with four fouls, or you can put him back in the game, and if he fouls out, he's going to come back over there and join you anyway. But maybe there's only one way he's going to score any points, and that's putting him back into the game. And there's no tomorrow. <laughs> Unless you win. And that one goes. 
Cox in for Roberts. That's been a deadly duo for the Panthers. Don't always get all the headlines, but Cox and Roberts stepping their games up today. Cox with 11 tonight for Curry. Moten now trying to find Christian. But good job there defensively by Fate Williams, but a foul is called. And Moten has the ability to hit the long jump shot as well. He hit two in a row to start the game, has it? Done much since then. He's sitting at six points, but first five points of the game came with the stroke of Moten. Gramlin trying to inbound. They find Randolph. And nice pushback by Terry on Randolph. Easy lay in. 63-52. Yeah, if you give Randolph, put him in a position where he only has to take two dribbles or less, he knows what to do with it. Grambling still in that zone trying to protect Christian a little bit. They put him on the back side of that 2-3. Less than seven seconds to go. Fate Williams has to do something in three seconds. And that's an air ball shot clock violation. Oh, no, oh, they're going to call a gonna foul. Call, oh, a foul. And that was Cunningham. And Cox had the inside position. They were both kind of backing up and they're directing players to the benches. It wasn't anything... Severe. I mean, he might, we'll take a look at it if we can, but just looked like two guys fighting for position for the ball that was a rebound coming off the rim. And I think the question is, did the clock violation happen and precede the foul? There you go. First whistle we heard from the official we thought was signifying a shot clock violation, but he was ready to call the foul. But if it was a violation before that foul occurred, then it's going to be no foul. And while they take a look at that, they'll give us a word here in a second. Man, we got championships on Saturday. Got a little football on Sunday. Mississippi Valley State making their season debut. They missed their first two games. They had to pause the program and They'll be taking on Jackson State, that game on ESPN2 on Sunday. Jackson State has got a lot of things going for them. A lot of people buzzing and talking with Hall of Famer Deion Sanders now, their head football coach. He is the coach, and he's currently got a couple of wins under his belt. But it is, even though it's a spring season that relatively short, still a long way to go before they can hoist up a trophy. Definitely busy here in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. So we're going with the foul because it's still Prairie View's ball. Five seconds left. Fate. Oh, he called backboard, but it didn't go in. 11 point deficit. A little over four to go here. You got Christian, you got Moss, you got Modi, Moten, you got Cunningham. All four of those guys can get you a shot. And they got a foul called on Roberts. That's going to be his fourth. Oh, fifth actually. So that's going to be it for Roberts. And Roberts is trying to <laughs> plead his case, but his time is done. And he made the most of it while he was out there. No doubt about it. But that's one man down with four minutes left to play. He fouls out with 14 points on the evening for Prairie View, one of their leading scorers. And Moss could not hold on to the ball, slipped out of his hands right back to Prairie View and in. And Grambling choosing not to go with any full court pressure here. They really haven't given Prairie View any problems. They've shown it some tonight, but Cam Mack and crew have been able to handle it pretty efficiently. Daniels from way out, hits the rim, goes off, loose ball, secured Randall. by Randolph. Randall. 
Cunningham in the paint. And Rod Mumford. Oh, check that. Christian for two, and he'll get one more. Yep, Christian went up, finished strong with the left hand. That put his body between the basket and the defender. Defender chasing the ball. Runs into the body of Christian for the foul. Dante is trying to get his team to get an upset win, but they got their work cut out for him with three minutes left. And in the earlier sem semifinal game, it was Texas Southern needing a prayer, and it was answered to My go to overtime. Michael Weathers going the length of the court. That tied it, and for this one, James, he called game. Weathers with the game winner, Texas Southern, 84-81. And we did find out, people might watch and say, man, he kind of has the, the retro thing going with his shorts there, but it's actually a tribute to his father. And that's the way his father wore his shorts because there was once upon a time when anyone who played basketball wore shorts at that length. So it's a family a family nod acknowledging his dad and a tribute is something special for him. And what a special game today for Michael Weathers. Not one, but two big three-pointers. Texas Southern with the win. And Grambling hopes they can get a number of three-pointers now as they trail big here with three minutes left to play. Well, that and ball was wayward. Henry could not bring that one back into the fold. And Cox is looking at his teammates like, well, I mean, you want to blame me for that? I mean, I threw it, but really? Moss. Over to Cunningham. Randolph with an acrobatic move into the paint for two. And we described everyone who could score and create a shot for Grambling. We didn't say Randolph, and <laughs> he's the one who took it upon himself. Here's the full court defense by Grambling. Trailing now by seven, still alive with three to go. They're pressing as much as they can, and now they're going to sit back and try to apply pressure and get a turnover. All right, there in that 2-3 there. Oh, Randolph with the time. block. Yes. Daniels is going to have to get it up. He didn't hit rim. Air ball, and now Prince Moss is going to push it back out to Moten. Moten, but this time, Daniels with the block. It's been a block party for Prairie View with Briscoe, and now Daniels getting in on the action. And Daniels might be a shooter who hangs around the perimeter on offense, but don't forget he's six foot seven. If he has to climb the ladder to show you who's boss, he can do that as well. Briscoe is in, and he'll be on Randolph as we go with the inbound. Cunningham's going to have to call timeout. He couldn't find anybody there. Smart timeout. Coach called the timeout because Cunningham could not see the fact that the man covering Christian fell and Christian was wide open. Smart timeout by Dante Jackson. Yeah, and Grambling's been on a little bit of a run, on a 9-2 to two run here over the last couple of minutes. Uh, their prospects a little better. You look at a seven-point deficit, two and a half minutes, that's, that's manageable. That's definitely manageable. look and see, well, who's going to step up for Grambling? It looks like whoever uh, gets the ball has an opportunity. Randolph has shown he, he can even create off the dribble. Uh, but you look at Christian, he has those four fouls, but he's in the game. He can get things done for you. Uh, Moss as well. Christian with 16. Moss, eight points. Randolph in there with nine. And Randolph couldn't hold it. Goes out of bounds. Prairie View basketball. And now Daniels is coming in for Briscoe. Briscoe was just there for a defensive purposes. And now we've got more substitutions as Cobb, Rahan Cobb, Rahan Cobb is coming in for Christian. Yeah, not want to press their luck too much with Christian with those four fouls. Now that they know that they're on defense, they're going to pull Christian out. A little bit over two minutes left to play, and Fate 
gets it across midcourt. And Cam, Fate, and Cox, the three-headed guard monster, has been doing a good job maintaining consistency for the offense here tonight. Prairie View not in a hurry at all. And that's a win for Grambling. You leave Henry open, force him to take a perimeter jump shot. They can live with that. Cunningham driving in, and an acrobatic shot doesn't go. There's a scrum, and Cobb tries to go up, but a foul called, and Daniels is like, man, was that me? I don't believe it was me. Oh, well, it's him. Take a look at the replay. Fight for the rebound. Daniels thought he had it. Just a little more effort there on that play on the Grambling side. One and one for Cobb. And he makes the first one. Cobb, a junior from Atlanta. Nice size player, 6'9". Listed as a guard and a forward. That goes long. That, yes, went long. And Cam Mack now with less than two minutes to play. They're going to apply the pressure. Cobb puts his hand in. He put and directly in the chest to Cam Mack. Yeah, looks like that one also hit him in the chops a little bit. Definitely made Mac backpedal after he absorbed the blow. Free throws key for the Panthers in this last minute and 39 seconds. The winner will take on Texas Southern in the conference tournament final right here tomorrow on ESPNU. Mac gets the first. And this one turns out to be one of these Houston affairs. I'd like to say hello to my good friend, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill. He's down in that area, very familiar with these programs. Texas Southern and Prairie View, a big part of HBCU sports coverage in the media landscape. Free throw good. 139 left. It's go time for the G-Men. They got to hurry up and go. <laughs> and oh. Moss is right there. As you say, it's go time, and he went on that dunk. Yeah, Moten drew about two or three defenders there. Moss cut to the basket, open dunk, down to six. And now Henry responds with a dunk of his own. And that's what happens when you get desperate and you have to start trapping on defense. If you get beat, you often find somebody wide open who leaks over the top of your pressure. One minute to play. So Grambling looks content to allow Prairie View to hold the ball here. And I never understand if, you, if you're going to foul that period of time while you're just waiting. Like, go ahead and make the foul. Fate shooting a one and one. And that one doesn't go. And now Gramlin has a chance to make an impression. That was an air ball. That would have made it very interesting. That would have cut the lead down to five, still with 45 seconds to go. And we could have saw a free throw shooting contest. Uh, that kind of deflates your emotions a little bit if you're a Grambling fan after that air ball. Moss knocks it out of bounds. But a turnover here could still keep things interesting. They're going to foul Henry. Randolph is called for that one. I can hear Dante Jackson. 
through his mask yelling travel, <laughs> but Henry caught the ball. Here's the player of the game presented by USAA, the official military appreciation partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Linnell Henry, how about that? He says, hey, does the dirty work. <laughs> I might not have scored 36 and coming off a career high, but watch me work. And you see his numbers, a double-double, 16, and make that 17 and 11. 6 of 12 from the field. Linnell Henry, our USAA player of the game. Hey, well-earned honor today is Moten. Sky in for the layup. Still an eight-point game, 40 seconds to go. Got to get a turnover here. They can't do it, and they're going to foul. So it's going to be two free throws now. That's the 10th team foul. And Dante still doing a good job trying to coach his guys up. And if this season ends right now, the future is still bright for the G-Men. Yeah, nothing nothing not to be proud of for this season that uh, Grambling had. You make it to the semifinals of the SWAC tournament. You come into this game above 500, and just like everyone else, you've had all the pressures and problems to deal with during a pandemic. But to get this far is a, a testament to the strength of your program. And that one also is successful. Ten-point lead with 30 seconds to play. Randolph, that one doesn't go. Christian, that one doesn't go. Randolph again, that one doesn't go. And now Briscoe able to get the rebound and a foul. And it wasn't for lack of effort. But it just wasn't the night ultimately for Grambling as Prairie View is set to move on to the SWAC championship game. And in that SWAC championship game, number one versus number three seed, 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU, the SWAC Western Division rival. And it's safe to say uh, Houston Metro rivals in Prairie View A&M and Texas Southern. And they'll duel in a neutral site here in the hills of Alabama. And that's going to be a front-line battle, man. And look, we've even seen more players uh, come to the game. Briscoe's made his presence known. He can get in there and, and bang with Nicholas tomorrow. And Henry, we've seen what he can do. And we all know Michael Weathers is going to be coming in. Weathers and Mack. There are matchups and storylines everywhere with Prairie View and Texas Southern. Foul caught on Fate, and Moten will get uh, one more opportunity to score some points and bring this possibly underneath 10 points. It's really a, an opportunity for Texas Southern to show they're still a team to be reckoned with in the SWAC. Prairie View has kind of had a a surge to the top in the last three seasons, a spot that Texas Southern could almost just write them in is, is running through the swag for a while there for a couple of years. Man, they were really rolling. Uh, but don't think that they're, they're no longer a contender. They definitely are. And for Dante Jackson, you know that the coverage's not bare, but you want to add some pieces to try to get this team to the upper echelon of the conference. Yeah, but in three seasons that he has been here, He's definitely done an outstanding job. Faye hits the first. Back to a 10 point lead. And make it 11. 15 seconds left to play here in the semifinal. Matchup between Gramlin and Prairie View A&M. That one doesn't go, and with less than 10 seconds, Cox is going to dribble it all the way out. 
And it's celebration time for Prairie View. But don't celebrate too hard. Still some more business to be finished here at the SWAC tournament. And for Byron Smith and Dante Jackson, they embrace. And Prairie View moves on to try to bring home another tournament title, but standing in their way will be their arch rival, Texas Southern. We've seen a couple of rivalry games here the last couple of days. We were all delighted by Grambling and Southern, and we're gonna finish it off on the mid side with Prairie View and Texas A&M. Just layers to this is tournament action, which is one level of excitement. And then when you see arch rivals playing for it all, that adds an entirely different level. No doubt about it. And we take a look at the men's bracket, and it is all set. Prairie View A&M, the number one seed, taking on the number three seed, Texas Southern, a rematch of the 2019 tournament final in which Prairie View A&M started their run at basketball immortality as the dominant force in the SWAC. Yeah, Texas Southern just had some great coaching over the years. Mike Davis had a six run there, six year run there. Uh, he moves on and then Coach Jones comes in and it's uh, just been a really great time in Houston and Texas fans, SWAC fans are gonna be in for a treat in tomorrow's championship game. Tomorrow's championship game, Texas Southern versus Prairie View A&M. Who do you think has the edge? Oh, would you put me on the spot here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where do you go? I, I tell you who the real winner is going to be. It's going to be uh, the fans because the athleticism along the front line uh, of both teams, uh, we've seen the things that Nichols can do. I'll tell you one thing that's probably going to be the most important is you watch how things played out today. Who can stay out of foul trouble? Because mm -hmm. that really changes. The first half, the personnel that Texas Southern had out there tonight versus the second half, those were two totally different teams because they had three players uh, in foul trouble. So I think the team that, that can find the first advantage, and it might be, having someone sit down because they pick up some early fouls. That's a 6.30 p.m. Eastern temp, and before that, we'll have the women's final, Alabama State taking on Jackson State women. Okay, I got your prediction there. Find the coin and flip it because that's what it's <laughs> been like this year. They played twice. Alabama State won one. Jackson State won one. Neither game decided by more than two points. And, Tali, it's been a pleasure working with you. And it's been a long week, but a very <laughs> fun week of basketball. I love Birmingham, and I'm not saying that because we're in Birmingham. One of my favorite cities, basketball, my favorite sport. So you put those two together, man. It's been a pleasure working with you, James. I'd like to thank the SWAC for this opportunity. It's a lot of fun, and I hope the fans have enjoyed it all. And for Tali Carr, I'm James Red saying so long from Birmingham, Alabama, where the final score Prairie View a &M moves to the championship game 74 to 63 over Grambling State. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. You can tell this is really great.